Hey, well, going down video, uh, we've we've given us our, ourselves a, a part that should be fairly easy to play, um, fretted, and this is just your chance to really get a sense of downbeat, upbeat. Um, these are familiar rhythms to you. Uh, it, it's just sonically deceptive, like we talked about in the lesson. So, you know, and firstly, I'd just encourage you without, the te you know, fighting the temptation to play additional notes. Just spend some time doing this until it starts to actually feel intuitive, like real autopilot-y, which if you spend, you know, five, ten good minutes on it without putting in high notes, it'll start to feel pretty doable. Uh, and that's what we're going for when you're actually executing this after memorization is thumbs on autopilot and then I'm doing other stuff at the same time. Uh, so like we, you know, right hand wise, my positioning is you know, thumb on the playing the bass strings, which in this song we're just playing octave. We don't hit the fifth string. My, these three fingers are on strings one, two, and three. You know, uh, my fingers are curled up. Wouldn't really recommend anchoring your pinky on the instrument unless it feels really necessary. Uh, but yeah, you know, nice curled up fingers. Uh, it looked pretty good during the lesson. Um, so one thing we want to make sure we're doing is playing audible bass notes. Uh, we get to a point where when we're like, we actually have to hit the bass notes harder than the melody notes, which involves, I'm sure something I've mentioned already, which is being in behind the string and kind of pulling it away from the instrument. If I'm going like, even just for like, I have to kind of bang at the bass note a little harder. But for now, let's ignore that and just have a general awareness of making sure that the bass notes are audible or you're registering them as, as being there. Cool. So the first half of the first measure goes, then we're going to do this no, no slide. So yeah, like I'm going one and two end. I'm just not playing anything on one end. One and two end. Or if we like, squeeze bass high. Or both bass high. So let's just go for, in your practice, pause the video and go for single instances of that, not turning it into. Or, you know, you could do that after, but we're just getting. So there we are playing. And if you're having trouble hearing the rhythm, you can count you know and actually give your sense of self a sense of where the upbeat is after beat one one and two and cool so then just starting at the second half of that measure ignoring that it's a slide and so forth uh now i'm going three and four so this is gonna or squeeze high bass so that's you know the we, we went one, two, and so doing that on its own right now, we can ignore all technique stuff, all dampening, and what's more I want you to. Again, we're not locked in on the strings. We're just doing this like you would be if you weren't playing slide for the moment, where, where our priority is just memorizing the sequence of things that we're doing. So second half of the first measure, three and four. My, you know, four can be scooted over, but we got three total occurrences. This. This. this cool so pause just work on the second half don't go just get and as soon as you got it down let's switch to playing the whole measure which goes and i'm going to play this a couple times so you can get a sense of how it sounds rhythmically So the first half was one, two, and three, and four. One, and two, and three, and four. Bass, 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 bass. Cool. So, and if you get comfortable with that, which again, we want to go for single attempts, ignore all technique. Uh, the rest should get a lot easier from there just for having gotten one total, you know, measure down with bass notes. Cool. So second measure, uh, we'll just go for our right hand part. 
So that's how it's going. One and two and... Cool. And so naturally that's going to be... Yeah, so that's, um, you know, both high, both high. Yeah, both high, both high. And in fact, um, why don't you ignore that it's a pull off? If we look at measure three, uh, that time it's not, it actually isn't a pull off. Instead of going, it just goes. So let's pretend that's the first half of this measure that we're actually going to, we'll just go, which is a pull off. And I'm going to send you a, a corrected version via email with the correct stuff. But So we'll go. So strike, strike, and that's going one and two. Okay, so it's gonna be one and two and, excuse me. That's just going one and two and, so if I add bass to that, So we're going to do a pull off here, but strike there. So that's us going one and two and one and two and um, cool. And then we'll notice beats three and four are identical to our from the first measure. So if you learn the first measure, second half, it's something, but it um something else, but it um so the same second measure. That's one and two and three and four. And as soon as you get the sequence down, really listen to your bass line, because it's going to just be, you know, there's no two downs in a row, no two ups in a row. Um, so, there we go. So that so far is... Now just work on the slide part without bass notes, you know, for the... And actually, I, I'm going to suggest seeing um, how the difficulty this was um, giving you. Actually ignore trying to get a good uh, dampen for... Because if it goes, that still sounds really cool. Car. Game on. All right, cool. So yeah, just, and I'm ignoring all down. So I'm just going, and that's our right hand part. We just want to make sure we hear not, you know, the pull off overtone is going to be right when you get to the last. No, not, just two total events. And if you want to work on going, you can. So cool, the right hand part is, and you will have already been doing this with your finger. So, cool, and we're actually gonna say, let's put the overtone in on purpose here. No dampen, as it's written. Cool. And then we were going, so now we're, that's our one and two end instead of, and then the same exact, so 
something. Would dip em something else. Would dip em. I just did that really staccato to be able to hear everything individually. Definitely get really good up till there. You're at 10, 20 in your counter. When we go. Get that down and bass. That's one and two, three and four and It's okay if you don't even do any lateral motion on that, or it's either way. Or they sound pretty similar as we're going for one of our like place that has a little bit of lateral motion, not more like just oh so. Let's make sure we just recognize that it's bass is the next thing that happens after bass is next. Cool, so then we leave that all rigging out while the last measure is just the open string. So three and four, excuse me, one and two, three and four, and one, two, three, four. So, first half. Second half. If you get a feel for that, you can just kind of start to go like. You know, just keep your bass line going and play whatever melody you want. You know, just going three, five, zero, three, five, zero, something like that on the high strings, goof around with improvising. Cool. Uh, there we go. So, yeah, we actually have to count it. And then as soon as you can hear it in your head, cease to count it, follow the bouncing thumb, and definitely finish as you go. It's just, yeah, cool, man. This is one of those things where an hour from now, an hour of playing this, it'll never be a fraction uh, this difficult again. Um, great. So hopefully that's going to get really cool. This is one of the more interesting parts of our instrument that we can... Uh, play a more orchestral, orchestral style with bass notes and high notes, kind of a more piano-y approach, which, uh, you know, makes it the bass notes imply high notes that aren't there, the high notes imply bass notes that aren't there, and uh, yeah, counting is required, and then stop counting altogether, uh, and then just another subtle reminder to uh, put your visual focus on the hand that actually needs it, like you might want to just look at your right hand a lot more when you're doing the fretted portion as opposed to the slide portion, um, and yeah, totally, so boom, 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 autopilot, uh, you know, it's a fun style for while we're at it, just bonus footage for uh, open D. Some good stuff is like, you know, uh, like how the E7 looks in first position in standard tuning. That's a good one. Uh, playing the third fret of the second and third string. Also a good one, you know. Kind of doing a pull off on the third string first fret. You know, just go around with that too a little bit if you want. Um, some Almond Brothers. Uh, nice to keep coming back to. There's a like. Uh, it's 
played in open D. All right, man. I'll see you next week. Cheers.